I'm walking up to Mother Teresa's now, but this is the Christian burial board, and I thought I'd take a look inside this cemetery. David Drummond, teacher. That's a lot more than you learn about most people from their gravestones. A couple introduced themselves, they're young people, and wanted to know where I was from. And He lives in Kolkata, has no idea about Mother Teresa's house. <clears throat> but he turned to me at the end, he says, can we go with you? And I go, no. And she started laughing. She says, that was plain, that was direct, something along that line. Died in 1942. He lived about 51 years. And baby Francis, not a year. It's interesting with the arch suggesting that there's access to a cavity below. Hmm. Still maintained. Some brand new. It looks like some advertising. I think they tear up other gray sites putting new ones in. These walkways are new and nicely done. It's a nice touch. English seems that name. This large one's interesting and to the memory of Right Honorable James Wilson expressly sent from England to restore order in the finances of India at a period of disastrous confusion. One of the soundest political economists, safest financiers, and best administrators in his generation. Of the free trade policy in England. This looks like some have been dug up. Life is short, but these grave sites even shorter than I imagine the people anticipated. Surround by the jumble remains. Here lies in peace the noble John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune. He paved through the dark world of Indian women and rejuvenated it with the benevolent light of education assuring a luminous destiny for them and put the foundation of the Hindu female school, the Hindu school. Looking very British. While men prune the trees and clean up the grave sites, this man digs another one. Here lies a man whose last name is Eyre, like Jane Eyre who died in 1851. Presumably his wife is in the same crypt. Look at how the weight of the tombstone, the upper part, has broken the slab that protected the remains. This is a pretty copse of trees and palm trees. Interesting, in the midst of these fallen, deteriorating grave sites, there are, is this one that's so nicely maintained. <coughs> Here it almost looks like that cross, which is a heavy piece of stone, might have been standing vertically and when it fell, it just literally smashed apart those other stones, the capstone. It's interesting and curious that these new plots, or newer built plots, lie in the midst of these old, deteriorated and abandoned ones. For some reason, here are two that are sold reserved. You don't see all that often. These are the first I've seen in India. These are the original wood wheeled, hand drawn rickshaws. 
there's one that's still apparently in use. Maybe both of all of these are in use. You see some wagon wheels back there for repair. <laughs> Down there, a few blocks of the main drag for Mother Teresa's house. There's some free entertainment. Apparently, they're cleaning off the face. Probably just some old Bowery uh, tank. Some kind of cathedral in the background. It's just the natural. Something you don't often see in India is uh, these meat packers here. They don't eat meat normally. So I don't know if this is a Muslim area that does. In my rush to escape India, in Varanasi I had gone to a travel agency or an airlines and changed my ticket to as soon as possible, which meant several days later out of Kolkata at a rapacious thousand dollars just to make the ticket change. In Kolkata, I whiled away less than a week in one of my worst hostels, if you want to call it that. It was simply a room. They had no water. It was in a very uh, run-down area, except for a ho good hotel about a block away that I ate at frequently. Other than Mother Teresa's site and a quick jaunt into the better area I wish I had chosen, I left India 